Okay, YouTube Nation, it's been a while, but we're back, and we're stronger than ever before. We just took the ACT yesterday, and we throttled it. Bunch of 28s. We're, we're excited. And then we had a great track meet last night. It did take forever, uh, but, uh, you know, Faribault, we know that you guys are working hard to, to, to do your best to make the meet go quickly. We are here to talk about dot product today and vectors. Today, your goal is to be able to find the product of two vectors, find the angle between two vectors, and uh, actually calculate the amount of work done. So we're going to do some application pieces here. Uh, anybody take physics? Couple? Okay. So we're going to do some physics applications here as well. Uh, we have Rachel not here today. Shout out to Rach. We hope you're better, and we hope to see you soon. Carissa is sobbing in the back of class. Stop it, Carissa. It's kind of embarrassing. Pull yourself together. She's so loud. <laughs> Stop it, Chris. Uh, okay. So how do you multiply two vectors? If you want to take vector u times vector v, some people think that you're going to come up with a new vector, and that's not the case. You actually come up with a specific value. You take a times c, so you take the two horizontal components and multiply those together, and then you take the two vertical components, b times d, you multiply those together, and then you add the results. So in this situation, as it says, find the product of the vectors and the angle between them. We'll do the angle in a second. But we take, whoop, don't do that, Mr. Gens. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then we add to that 2 times 3 is 6. And we get 4. Are we all clear? That's it. So understand when I have that question on the test and people get it wrong, why I start digging my eye out with a spoon. Are we all clear? So this vector here, i minus j, is 1, negative 1. And this vector here is 3, 4. Okay, it's just written in ij form, as your book has it. So what I would like you to do is quick find the dot product of those vectors. Go. I've got negative one. We all good? Okay, so here's what some people do. Here's a mistake that they make. They take one times negative one is negative one, and they take three times four is 12, and they add it together and they get 11. Okay, you don't multiply the, the x and the y values together. You multiply the two x's and the two y's. Are we good? Can you all do that? Way to go. You're off to a great start. I shouldn't be surprised because you were an extremely intelligent class. Shupashma. The angle between two vectors, uh, that's a proof that I'm not ready to show you, but I can give you the formula, okay? Angle between two vectors, we set up cosine of theta is equal to, and we do the dot product, u times v. Well, we divide it by something. We divide it by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And there we have it. So look at this example. It has negative 1, 2, and 2, 3 are my vectors, okay? So I'm actually going to just make a quick little graph so you can understand what the heck we're even doing here. So I'm, I'm worried that you may not. Number one mistake I make as a teacher, I assume. So the vector negative 1, 2, so back 1 and up 2, that's my first vector. And then 2, 3, over 2, and up 3. And theta is going to be the angle form between the two vectors. What we want to do is determine what that angle is. As you look at it, can somebody, you know, suggest to me what they think it might be? Make a guess. 85? Anybody else? I think it's more than 85. You may think it's less than 85. You're going to say 80, 90, 70, 110. What if I, what if I guess, what if I said 160 degrees? Do you think that that's within reason? I think it's way off. I mean, I think we should all be able to look at that and say, well, it looks like it's going to be an acute angle or maybe 90. Okay, maybe maybe 90 or an acute angle. Okay, all right, you're saying 60. Okay, all right, 
So we have an idea for the reasonableness of our solution. Let's set it up. Cosine of theta is equal to, hey, what's u times v? We already did it, right? Thank you, Mr. Gibbs. Well, you're welcome. I'm trying to use the information we've already set up. Magnitude of u. Do you remember how to find the magnitude of a vector? And you say no. The magnitude of a vector is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Oh, yeah. That was the whole trigonometry thing, right? Little Pythagorean theorem. It's a long time ago. It was like five days ago. Okay. Right. I think that if you take the ACT during the year, they should just give you automatic straight A's the rest of the year. Yeah. I mean, who subjects people to that kind of torture? It's not right. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so we got the magnitude of V is the square root of A squared plus B squared. So A squared plus B squared, what am I going to get here? Square root of 5, good. Times, what am I going to get here? Square root of 13. So I have 4 over the root of 65. Is that my angle? No, what do I have to do? Inverse cosine. I take out my handy-dandy calculator. If we're using vectors, we are in degrees. Mode, I'm in degrees, and I go. 65? No, that's not our final answer, so we don't need to do that. There's your cosine inverse of 4 divided by the root of 65. But boom 60.26 degrees. Maya was close, and she's very proud of herself. She's grinning ear to ear right now. Way to go. You're great at guessing the angle form between two vectors. That's a skill. You know how to do all of it? You just did it in your head right away. Okay, you're a liar. I wouldn't, yeah, I no longer trust you as a human being. No, she doesn't. We're taking back your star qualities right now. They're all gone. So, look at the angle. Does it look like it could possibly be 60 degrees? So, here's what you're going to do. You know that the dot product is negative 1 for the next two vectors, correct? You're now going to find the angle form between those two vectors. Go ahead. Try to find the angle form between two vectors. Good roll here. Okay, let's see what we get. The Schuppischmott class is rolling here. We've got cosine of theta is equal to dot product negative 1 divided by. Now, Devin taught me this. Devin taught me this. I thought it was a really good idea. So we've got uh, what's the magnitude of A? Square root 2, right? And then uh, here you get the square root of 25, right? So here's what Devin said. He said, you know, a lot of people did negative 1 over 5 roots of 2, but they tended, they, a lot of people made a mistake when they typed it in their calculator. So he just did negative 1 over the square root of 50. And, and I'll, I'll show you both, uh, you know, either one would give you the same result, but I'll show you how you type it in. So we go cosine inverse of negative 1 divided by, and you have to put parentheses around the 5 roots of 2. And so, whoop, need a 2 in there. And so when you do that, you get the 98.13 degrees. Devin? He's a student here at our school. Dildy? Yeah, super smart kid. Um, if I change that and I go cosine inverse of negative 1 divided by the square root of 50, uh, notice I'm going to get the same thing and get that 98.13 degrees. So did I catch anybody uh, into making a mistake with typing that in? Okay, that was my goal to, to so you would pay attention to that in the future, okay? Good job. That was, that was kind of skill number one, and that's the toughest one. You guys can do that? You ready to do an easy one? Let's talk about orthogonal vectors. Everybody say orthogonal. 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 Can you, can you tell us about how you talk about orthogonal in English?
Okay, they use orthogonal lines to paint. Interesting. All right. Did you guys learn about the ortho center in geometry? Interesting where the ortho center comes from. Maybe it's through the use of the altitudes. The altitudes make 90 degree angles with the triangle, right? That's what an altitude does. Orthogonal vectors are perpendicular vectors. Or 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine whether two vectors are orthogonal. And it's very simple. <coughs> 90 degrees. What's the terminal point? 0, 1. So the sine of 90 degrees is 1. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So we want the cosine of the angle to be 0. Right? But you know that the cosine of an angle is also equal to u times v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v. So think about that. If u times v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v is equal to 0, then you tell me, does the top have to be equal to 0 or is the bottom equal to 0? Top. Top equal to 0, then it's equal to 0. If the bottom is equal to 0, then it's... So we can use this to make this statement. Vectors are orthogonal if u times v is equal to 0. All you got to do is just take the two angles, or two vectors, multiply them together. You get 0, they're perpendicular, they're orthogonal. So here we have it, a times b. What? Negative 2 plus 2, 0. Yes, they are orthogonal. That's it. You like that? Do the next one. Go. You're a nice girl. Yeah. I've got negative 60, and so I'm going to say no, they're not orthogonal. We agree? Did I catch anybody into seeing that they might cancel? Okay, good job. All right, flip it over. This is our last problem for the day. We're skipping the word problems tomorrow, or word problems. And, and I want to make sure we cover those because you guys are always asking, when are we ever going to use this? And so I want to make sure we talk about that application because I don't want to let you guys down. I know that the application to you is very important, so thank you, Tim, for your smile. I, I know that you're appreciating my slight sense of humor there. Here we go. Find the work being done uh, by the force F in moving an object from P to Q. So what I'm going to do is, so work is defined as force times distance. And so what we want to do is find the work done by force F in moving an object from P to Q. So the force vector in this situation is 1, 1. Everybody with me? Multiplied by the distance vector. So the distance vector is going to be the distance from moving it from 0, 0 to 3, 4. So what's the horizontal component? If I move it from 0 to 3, how far have I moved it horizontally? 3. If I moved it from 0 to 4... Four. Okay, so that's the distance vector. So now we multiply them together, and what do you get? Seven units of work have been done. Cool, huh? It's not too difficult. Next one, what's my force vector? And what is my distance vector? If you're moving it from P to Q, then you take the Q values minus the P values. So negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. And 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So we have 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. And add those together and we get negative 1.
Excellent question. We good?